final presentation of this session and, and the, the day, uh, we will continue to abide by the trend of um, now leaving lithium niobate and uh, Dr. Everestoff will present on alumina. I'm very grateful for possibility uh, to give this oral presentation. This work uh, was made by researchers from three countries and two generations. Three countries, Professor Meyer from uh, Max Planck Institute from Germany, uh, Professor Katomin and Professor Zhukovsky from Institute of Solid States Physics in Riga in Latvia, and me quantum chemistry department of St. Petersburg State University, and two representatives of younger generation who made calculations. Why we have chosen uh, interstitial oxygen in corundum? You know that in, uh, corundum is very, uh, has a very high radiation resistance, and radiation produces different uh, nature point defects in corundum. And the most important are interstitial atoms and vacancies. Vacancies, in particular the famous F center, are studied more than interstitial atoms. And that's why we consider interstitial oxygen atoms in corundum. Majority of people who make calculations in the world use plane wave program. It was already mentioned today, this VASP from Wien. We prefer Italian program, Crystal which works, uh, I am head of quantum chemistry department, but chemists never work with plane waves. They work with atomic bases. Um, and therefore we use this code, which employs Gaussian type functions centered on atomic nuclei. nuclei. This is very efficient now. It allows not only to cal calculate different properties of crystalline solids, but it's very important. It allows to consider uh, such systems which have uh, sub-periodic sub -periodic, uh, properties. I mean surfaces with 2D, 2D periodicity and nanotubes with 1D periodicity. Uh, in plane wave calculations, uh, it's necessary to introduce artificial periodicity. Uh, in the case of corundum, we use a hybrid Harty Fock DFT Hamiltonian. Uh, I heard today uh, that people say we use DFT. Nowadays say we use DFT is nothing to say because DFT has many different uh, options and different five famous DFT ladder, uh, which you know <laughs> was discussed. We use hybrid because we want to reproduce um, energy band gap because when you consider point defects, energy gap correct is very important. Um, corundum structure, I show here on left primitive unit cell, this is rhombohedral lattice, and uh, on right convention unit cell. For crystallographers, they prefer crystallog uh, convention unit cell, which is three times larger than primitive unit cell. But first and important step for us was to reproduce correctly the experimental data about structure. Corundum structure is described by four parameters, two lattice parameters and two atomic position parameters. And you see here the comparison with experimental data. And gap is reproduced also correctly. Gap is close to 9 EV. Next point, very important, where we put this interstitial. Uh, at the beginning, interstitial was put in like of position with um, symmetry C3i, uh, and this is Wyckoff position B. And what happens then? A very important feature of our calculations is an attempt to understand calculating the phone and frequencies. Is it really stable configuration or not? If we have in calculation imaginary frequencies, that it means that it comes down from this. At, but at first, to be convinced that your calculation of frequencies is uh, reliable, you need again to calculate frequencies for bulk crystal, which are known experimentally. And you see the calculated frequencies and experimental ones 
more or less close. Uh, difference is not more than five or three percent. Then when you put this uh, oxygen atom in interstitial and again calculate frequencies, you have imaginary frequency. Uh, huge, minus 490 reciprocal centimeters. What it means? It means that you need to find other position of this interstitial. And uh, uh, quantum chemistry approach I mean LCAO basis, allows you to consider such things as point charge uh, having very large band gap, about 9 EV. Uh, aluminum uh, corundum is uh, uh, mixed uh, ionic covalent compound. You see that calculated charges on atoms are not close to plus 3 and minus two. It means that uh, very important to take into account real electron distribu the distribution in this compound. And uh, when we put uh, in this high symmetry position uh, interstitial oxygen, we have uh, some change of oxygen charge. You see that for neutral interstitial atom, you have minus uh, zero four, of zero for six. And when we add electron to this oxygen, this added electron is also um, distributed all, uh, over the whole system. So what we try to do? We try to consider interstitial oxygen and most neutral and charged and to find uh, its position, its uh, distance from the regular ion oxygen. Idea of so-called dumbbell is not a new one. Uh, about 20 years ago, this dumbbell, uh, by dumbbell I mean when you um, put into the crystal interstitial oxygen, and then some molecule uh, forms with regular oxygen and this interstitial. Such a structure was found in more, uh, more simple crystal, in magnesium oxide also many years ago. And uh, in corundum, it's less investigated. What's important? Then when you move this atom from this high symmetry position and try to find the uh, new position, it moves to regular oxygen. And uh, you see here on this picture three possible positions. Final result is that optimized dumbbell configuration has formation energy about uh, 4 EV, and distance uh, very close, 1.4, um, very close to peroxide oxygen 2 minus free molecule, where you, the distance is 1.34. And charge of this whole uh, dumbbell is close to minus 1, 1. What is important, I told you that when, the, when we calculate uh, frequencies, and we see that some of them are imaginary, that it means that uh, structure is unstable. But in this case, of course, we recalculated all the frequencies, and now we have, have that all frequencies are real, and it has to be so. So it means that it is not only energetically more favorable, but it really uh, something uh, corresponding to uh, real, uh, real uh, structure. For supercell model, which we use, uh, today, in morning session, it was also discussed. A super cell model is necessary always to investigate the influence of the results of the super cell size, uh, because super cell size defines the uh, distance between uh, point defects in uh, two super cells. And uh, you see that convergence, we investigated this convergence for three supercells of 80, 120, and 270 atoms, and convergence uh, was good, and difference was uh, very small. What is important, that this dumbbell configuration is the most favorable in corundum compared with oxygen vacancy and Frankel pair. Uh, oxygen atom and uh, oxygen vacancy. You see here the difference uh, in formation energies and for comparison uh, I give the formation energy at the center in that high symmetry position from which we began to move to dumbbell. Uh, when you try to find dumbbell structure 
you need formally consider different migration paths. And in this case, you can find, uh, we considered four migration passes. Two of them in the plane, uh, uh, and uh, two of them perpendicul in uh, perpendicular this, uh, uh, direction. You know that uh, aluminum corundum consists, it has a hexagonal structure, it consists of planes which are connected. And uh, we need, uh, we considered pass one, uh, here you see uh, this pass one as uh, blue, and uh, this work, I will not go in detail, we considered <clears throat> different distances in the initial structure with high symmetry, this saddle point, and then a final point. And what is interesting, that when this uh, interstitial oxygen moves to dumbbell, it never returns uh, to the former high symmetry position. It simply jumps to other uh, oxygen regular atoms. And this can be found only using this simulation of migration paths. And uh, we also using this um, atomic basis can consider what happens from point of view of electronic charge distribution in the center at different uh, steps of this migration. It's interesting, it will work? Yes, it works, <laughs> animation. So here you see the moving of this uh, interstitial atom uh, when you consider in plane and next one, uh, interplane because this moving is formally three-dimensional, therefore we considered both uh, directions. Summary. First point is that this calculation scheme, hybrid Hartifog DFT calculation with atomic basis, give reasonable uh, good agreement with experimental data, I demonstrated it for bulk corundum. Second, Similarly to magnesium oxide, neutral interstitial oxygen atom forms dumbbell pair. This, is, this dumbbell pair, as I already told, is something similar to oxygen 2 minus peroxide molecule. And the distance in this structure between oxygen atoms uh, is close to that oxygen 2 minus molecule. Permation energy was investigated, and you see that it, its change, change is uh, not large, and uh, this means that uh, even 80 atoms supercell is enough to describe this situation. Uh, and uh, also it's possible to estimate diffusion barrier of this intermediate uh, interstitial oxygen, and it is something close to 1.4. Thanks for attention. I have two minutes for questions. <laughs> question? Okay. So this question, when you create the oxygen interstitial, uh, so you create probably also vacants of oxygen. So do you consider this? Uh, vacancies were considered also, but not in this report. Uh, if you are interested, I'll give you some uh, references. Uh, those people which are mentioned as co-authors without my participations calculated Frankel pair where vacancy and uh, oxygen atom are considered and vac vacancy also. May, may I ask the, the second? Because I simply showed the table where it is seen. I use the result to show that formation energy, vacancy formation energy is higher, essentially higher, than that of dumbbell. May, so maybe, 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 maybe uh, so I would like to comment my, yes. my, 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 my comment. So I, <laughs> okay. my feeling is, is following that when you have the excess of oxygen in the oxide materials, it looks like you have vacancy of metal. So c could you comment this? Maybe it's simple, the lower energy is to have the vacancy of aluminium than excess of uh, oxygen. It, in in principle, it is possible. In framework of supercell approach, you can consider different possibilities, include aluminium and oxygen vacancy, but you need to have very powerful computer 
because you will have huge supercell. Formally, it's possible. So, it, typically, the superoxide oxygen to minus molecule is around the bond 1.32, and the oxygen 2 to minus peroxide is around 1.52. And you are mentioning that uh, you obtain 1.4, but you are getting the O2 minus, the superoxide uh, solution. Is that correct? And if, it's, if that is correct, where is the other electron? Uh, because you, if you are putting an oxygen there, where is the other electron if your system is, is neutral? What is um, known from calculations and what is not very reliable? We have distance between when we add second electron, then we have formally oxygen 2, 2 minus, and distance in our case is increased to 1.8 something, 87. But now you have charged point defect, and supercell model is from this point you, you must be cautious because you have periodical charged point defect. And that's why I do not very, I was speaking mainly about neutral oxygen. Why? Because for calculation of charged point defect, independent on plane waves or atomic basis, you need to have some background, which in other case you will have divergent Coulomb potential. That's why I am very cautious about the results for oxygen 2 to minus. Okay, I see that there are other questions, but I'm also seeing a, okay, we can do one more. The, the conference chair says we can do one more question. But I finished in time, Christoph. <laughs> Hi. Um, have you calculated the oxygen, the O2 dissociation energy um, for, for crystal? Because you're comparing the formation energy of uh, oxygen vacancy and oxygen interstitial. I'd be interested to see what the difference was if you compared your formation energy to just a single oxygen, because... Um, especially periodic DFT doesn't seems to do a very good job of calculating the dissociation energy of, of O2. But basically. it was shown in the table. You see, I compared. I, uh, yes. I have no time to return to the table. But I want to say that, uh, I forgot to say, say this, to reproduce correctly um, formation energy of these oxygen point defects, you need to reproduce correctly a neutral molecule, oxygen 2, uh, total energy. Of course, I don't speak about plane waves for this, because in plane waves you need to consider a free oxygen molecule in periodic box. I do not understand this. But we calculate free oxygen molecule and received very good agreement with experimental distance and formation energy of oxygen molecule. And then we take half of this total energy to use it for oxygen-rich uh, situation when we have this uh, interstitial. Okay, cheers. Okay, thank you very much. With that, I think we'll shut down the session and let's thank all the speakers.